Today we're going to be talking about mathematical relations. And I got a few definitions we must go over first. And I wrote them down already for you here. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. And so remember, an ordered pair kind of looks like this. If I had some, a parenthesis out here with the number 3, and a comma, and then a 2, this is an ordered pair. The first number tells me the x component of the ordered pair, which way I go horizontally on a graph. The second number tells me the y component, or the vertical component of the ordered pair. So it gives us two dimensions when we're graphing. Well, in a relation, again, is this set of ordered pairs. So it's one ordered pair or more. The domain of a relation is the first coordinate. Remember I said the first coordinate was the x value. So here is the domain. It's 3. And so that's the first value of the ordered pair. The range represents the second coordinate or the y value of the ordered pair. So in this case, the range would be 2. So here we had a domain of 3. Here we had a range of 2. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn a few different ways to represent a relation. And there's four different ways. And so we'll take a look at the first one. First one is just a set of ordered pairs. Pretty much the definition of a relation. And usually they'll write that in a brace. And remember, a solution set was in a brace? Well, a set is when we have numbers inside this brace. And so let's start with a few different numbers. How about negative 3, 1? That's one ordered pair. And we'll do negative 2, negative 3. There's our next one. And let a positive one, maybe like a 5, 4. And one more. Maybe a, a 2, comma, negative 1. So those are our, that's our relation. And so it's just a set of ordered pairs. And we can take this set of ordered pairs and, and organize it in different forms. Instead of just a, a set of braces with ordered pairs inside there, we can set it up by a table. So here's the next method of doing it. A table is something you've seen before. When we list our x and y values, usually, typically, we see this when we're graphing. So set up a table. And so they just take the x values. Remember, our x values are those first numbers, like negative 3, negative 2, 5, and 2. And they just put them in this table. Typically, they'll start with the lowest number, so we'll do that too, negative 3, but we've got to go ahead and put in its corresponding y value, which is 1. And then we'll take the next one here, negative 2, so we'll write in negative 2, and then its corresponding y value, which is negative 3. And then we'll take the next one, 5, well, actually if we go to 2, 2 is a smaller number, let's go with that one next, so 2, and its corresponding y value is negative 1. And then here we have 5. That's our x value. And its corresponding y value is 4. So remember, sometimes they'll ask about the domains and ranges. Remember, domains are always these numbers here. So these are our domains, and these are the ranges. And we'll look at that more in the second part. Well, there's another method to describing a relation, and that's in a mapping diagram. And a mapping diagram is similar to the table. However, if there is a repeating number, we don't have to write it a second time. There is no repeating number on the x's, so we can just list those numbers. And typically, again, they list them in order. Negative 3, negative 2, 2, and 5. So 
there are no repeating numbers, but if there was one, I, I wouldn't have to list it again. And I do the same thing with the y's. And again, if there was a repeating number here in the y's, I wouldn't have to list those. And so I'll just list those, and I'll do them in in the order, in numerical order again, just to do something a little different. So we'll start with negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 4. They don't have to go in order. And the reason is, is that what you do is you take the domains, or these x values, and you draw an arrow to the corresponding y values. So that's why they don't need to go in order. So negative 3 actually goes with 1 there. Negative 2, well, that goes with negative 3. And this 2 here goes with negative 1. And this 5 goes with 4. So typically we would just have them uh, right across from each other, but it's not necessary. I wanted to do something a little different, so that's what I decided to do. That's the mapping diagram, and it's useful when we have more than one repeating x value or repeating y value. It makes the table go a little bit quicker. You don't have to write so many things down. You just have to draw arrows. So the last type is graphing. And so that'll be the fourth type that you'll end up seeing, and you'll have to do as well. So what they're going to end up doing on a portion of the homework is they're going to list a set of ordered pairs like this. And they're going to ask you to take that relation and write it in the table format the mapping diagram, and then also graph. So you're going to end up having to do three different things with that set of ordered pairs. So here's graphing. We start with the first one, negative 3, 1. So <clears throat> we'll always start at the origin. Origin's right here in the center. And we go three spaces. You don't count the origin as a space. A space is all the way to negative 1. So that's one space, two, three. And then we follow what the y value says. It says to go up one space. And we just put a little dot right there. And that represents that point. And then we go on to the next one. So negative 2, negative 3, means again we go back to the origin. And we're going to go left two spaces. So 1, 2 spaces. And then we're going to end up going down 3 this time because it's negative. So we go straight down. 1, 2, 3. And once we're there, put a little dot. Now we have two more. We've got 5, 4. So we're going 5 spaces to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it's a positive 4, so we're going up. 1, 2, 3, 4. And once we're there, we put a little dot. And the last one, 2, negative 1. So here we go 2 spaces to the right. 1, 2, and then we go down one space. So down one space puts us right there. And that's it. That's all you're going to do is you're going to take some problems, so some a set of order pairs, a relation, and you're going to convey that relation in three different forms, a table, a mapping diagram, and graphing. And that's all. So that's the first part of the homework. We'll take a look at at uh, defining being given a table mapping diagram or graph and or even a set of ordered pairs and finding the domains and ranges in the next part.